John Reese, and uh, he's going to be talking to us about aeration while I bring up the slide. All right, we're back on track for uh, being done in time for lunch. So put the pressure on you. Hello. <laughs> so, am I okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm a, I'm a vendor, uh, so I, I appreciate skepticism is healthy, and, and you should all have that as well. Uh, I was a skeptic when I first heard about aeration using this type technology. A little bit of history of it was back in the 70s before Pitt Barnes, uh, some of the hog producers would take their on manure, recycle it through the barn to help flush things out. Um, and one of the issues there with the aerated water and, and uh, a, a sterlet was, was formed. It's a big problem and it was one of the causes for saying that this technology doesn't work. And uh, so struvite's pretty close to my heart. Um, and and in some instances, struvite is an issue, and I just tell the farmer that you have to be smarter than the struvite. So, and, and that does solve a lot of the problems when they think about practical solutions. Um, one of the, the, where I heard about this, I'm a, a, a professional engineer, I'm a PSP, and at the time, doing construction inspection at a large farm, the people came and said, hey, we're looking at this aeration. Uh, what do you think? I said, how much horsepower blowers is it? Um, and they said, it doesn't blow bubbles. Uh, it, it works on a different technology. I kind of looked at it. My advice to them was, it's snake oil. Don't walk, run. This can't work that way. And they they gave me all the honor that most people give an engineer, and they ignored me. They bought it, they installed it. I'm during uh, doing construction inspection, and I'm seeing the results on the pond that they installed. And it was intriguing because odor did get eliminated, and the solids were decomposed, and um, everything. I, I started being associated with a group. We uh, this was in 2006. So, anyway, skepticism is great, uh, but this is what I've learned. Um, I'm going to pick up from there now. So, uh, aeration, but I'm saying it's a new paradigm to, to applying to growing crops. That's where I believe we're headed when you can get rid of manure odor and decompose the solids. Uh, it makes it very easy to transport to. Uh, uh, crop land. Um, the benefits are the no fight to place before the crop is planted. There's no fight to beat the fall uh, freeze up. And some things coming up, uh, cellulose, cellulose, cellulose ethanol. Um, they got to rake the corn stalks, bale it, remove the corn stalks before they can get out in the field. That extra four weeks up in this area means your ground is frozen. You apply the frozen ground, you lost pretty much your whole year where the fertilizer value. So uh, uh, summertime application period is a longer, safer application period. Fertigation has been recognized to be very much more valuable per uh, unit of fertilizer used. Some of the uh, answer plots say that 70% uh, yield increase for the same amount of nitrogen being used in uh, fertilizer stuff. The missing part on this is not everybody has irrigation pivots to put it on growing crops, and there's nothing big to put out there. And a colleague of mine in a whole different industry is developing uh, this self-propelled, especially wide, portable linear irrigator. Um, basically, the pumper is still used. He's bringing that manure to the field, but you hook up with this. Uh, imagine the the logistics of this piece of equipment, a half mile long hose on a reel that's above the corn, being able to travel through this corn, drop the hose as it's going to the end of the field. When it gets there, pushes the button, 
it starts up irrigating five passes. It's got 160 acres uh, irrigated. So that's what we're looking at that should be available at the Manure Expo coming up. And again, it's all based on no odor. Um, it's not a nice thing to do in the summertime to spread raw manure, yet Nebraska's full of it. Um, uh, they share it with everybody. Okay, so USA, it's a big place, um, huge population. That building, when you add up all the manure being created in the rest of the United States, if I did my numbers right, 13 times each day it could be totally refilled. Manure. That's how much manure we have in the United States. Um, those people in the city, uh, the closest they ever get to having a manure problem is if they step in that dog do. And I can attest, and most of you can attest, that will ruin your day. <laughs> I mean, your whole day because you can't wash it off. You know it's lingering. You're wondering if all the people you're meeting can smell that. Um, urban, and I, I want you to look around. The people that you're sitting next to, uh, everybody in this building, is. I, I tend to think that you're more urban-oriented and, and personally affected by dog manure than you would be affected by what happens out on the farms. And yet... We in this room are charged with educating people uh, about their manure handling. And the Bible, of course, is, uh, that's an old version that tells my age besides my gray hair. Uh, there's only two sentences in that book. Aerobic process required free oxygen and generally considered uneconomical for livestock operations, meaning it's too expensive to run blowers. But the, they are helpful in reducing odor. Meanwhile, there's four pages that talk about anaerobic stuff. So we know a lot about everything else. We don't know much about aeration, and that's why I'm here. Uh, I was involved in an NRCS project in 2013. That tells an awful lot of information about the technology that's duplicated by that machine out there. And it's a totally different way of doing aeration. Some of these things are my claims, but I'm a vendor. I'm not a research person. I'm saying that there's a, a paradigm change. And some of these things, uh, your skepticism, I, I embrace. But somebody's got to come up with facts about these things. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, do that too much there. This is a pond of mine. This is smell -a vision here. Take a deep breath. That's what that smell is at that farm. 750 South Barron facility has zero odor. Uh, practically zero odor. And uh, he loves his place. He recycles through the barn. It comes back there. His farm is odor free. Uh, he will also irrigate that quite a bit. So during the summer, and he adds water to it during the irrigation season. So towards the end of the uh, uh, growing season, that's pretty much replaced with uh, water. Uh, those are our claims to what we do. Hello. Uh, my experience started in 2006, seeing pretty good results, unbelievable results. Um, these are some of the, this is, uh, come on, is that it? There it is. That's the equipment I saw first. This is other equipment. Uh, this is the study equipment. And this is a typical problem. Uh, string material wrapping on the propeller. That's another reason why back in the 70s that it doesn't work. And uh, after the study was done, I, I, I left that group. I said, I claim to be a smart engineer to solve the problems. The two main problems, too heavy. You needed a boom truck or crane. The other one was that it, it uh, invited the stringy material to wrap on it. That equipment out there is a result of my re total reconfiguration of how it should work, and it's proven to be pretty successful. 
Um, there's a video out there that actually shows the amount of uh, water that's moving. We are believing it's 20 to 30,000 gallons per minute that's moving and brought to the surface. The root of the technology is it's coming up from one point, it's stretching out, can't do anything but stretch out on the surface. That's the less dis displaced there. So uh, um, take a circle this big, getting a bigger diameter, you have to break it open. And that breaking open is much like stretching taffy, which was air into taffy, or mountain tumbling stream. Uh, it's continuous surface exchange. And the surface exchange is where oxygen happens. Uh, that's, that's the simplest version of why this, uh, my explanation of why this technology is working. Um, it creates a hostile environment for anaerobic bacteria because the pond is essentially mostly aerobic and the anaerobic don't like to live in that. So it's a pretty severe reduction in the greenhouse gas production other than carbon dioxide, which is given off. Cold weather, um, I often say it's like compost. It's composting in liquid. And everybody knows composting, the regular uh, dry matter composting, is a thermophilic bacteria that you rely on and it's a heat type thing. But in, even in wintertime, nature provides the bacteria. I don't sell bacteria. Nature provides it, uh, and I'm sure it's a seasonal change in which which uh, bacteria is, is thriving at that moment. That is uh, actually shown in wintertime. You can see the foam that's coming up is, is part of the solids. Uh, in a layman's term, uh, bacteria, uh, aerobic bacteria just got a deep breath of uh, air, and they're coming back for the second cycle, they're coming across the solids, they say, oh, fresh food. They latch onto it, start eating it, they burp or fart, I'm not sure which, but that gives them a little bit of life jacket and it, it brings them up to the, the top. So that's what I believe the foam is uh, coming up there. And then on the other sides here, that's pretty much frozen in, in, in this example here. Uh, widespreading induced surface exchange. Now, like I said, it's widespreading, but you can't just sit there and go like this to water. It has to have a mass uh, replacing it. And so the upward flow is the induced portion, and uh, the surface exchange is, uh, is how it all happens. Uh, 500 to 600 watts, that's all that uses for bringing up and spreading. But uh, So that's a horsepower motor. But the study showed that it should be able to keep up with about 100 animal units of dairy cows and 100 Jersey cows. Um, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the design of that, the propeller. It looks simple. It looks like a toy. But it is awesome. There's two different shapes. Uh, that is the model that can fit into the deep pit barns, hog barns. And, uh, yeah, the X shape is a little bit wider footprint, so any kind of stringy material that comes up um, and catching on the rods, uh, the frame, it's a little bit farther out, so it, it doesn't have uh, too much effect on uh, the, the flow. Um, this is the information. These are my claims. I'd, uh, uh, bottom line is I, I, I do want to see these uh, installed at more places. Uh, like to offer them at farms. My my method of sales is not to try to convince them that this works, other than to say, please let Mr. Farmer let me install this. Let me show you what it can do on your ponds if you like it. Then you buy it. Uh, it takes about three months for the, the aerobic bacteria to go from zero population to something that is obviously really uh, consuming the daily inflow there. So. Um, it, it's free equipment for anybody that wants to use it, to, uh, including research facilities. So uh, these are some of my claims. Um, I have the study has backed them up. There's more details that need to be reviewed. So what I've learned: uh, first of all, you better separate the dairies, floating solids. Uh, there's a, a, a 
place back there where I call able water, which is able. It's it's aerobic bacteria laden F1. It's it's got aerobic bacteria in it, and that stuff is hungry. It wants to eat stuff up, and uh, uh, when it when it starts touching something, it starts uh, uh, cleaning off the easy stuff. The floating solids, as they come up from the bottom to the top. They get cleaned pretty well, and they start floating, and now there's nothing on them. And uh, so that, that floating uh, solids cause a problem. It's, it's as easy as having a two-pond system and leaving the, the, the first pond, uh, let those uh, solids go there. Foliar feeding, 70% yield increase, automated system. Um, fertigation is big. Everybody knows that, but it's next to impossible to do unless you have irrigation pits. We're going to be changing that. Um, yet, when you have fertigation, an automated system, and it's no longer an evil thing to add water because you can get rid of it easily, now that adds a whole method of, of, of management changes in your farm that can really make your farm operate and your manure handling operate better. Um, <laughs> this one is important to understand. If you want to get rid of odor, you recognize that the farmer will not pay a nickel just to get rid of odor. He has to have some economic benefit beyond the not offending the neighbor. And so the, making this be able to go through an automated system by getting rid of the odor and decomposing the solids so they don't have any chance of plugging any nozzles up, um, that's the ticket for us as, as, as a group of people to let that farmer survive uh, without, without causing odor because he's getting economic benefits through a, a different way. Um, the other thing that's very important, we know about it. It's like the elephant in the room. We don't want to talk about that farmer who had to put manure on the on the road to ground. He had to do that. He's full. He waited too long or the weather or whatever. It's happening way, way, way too much. We don't talk about it. Yet, this uh, summertime application is really the, the way to get through there. What I think I've learned, and more studies needed, uh, uh, we were at the Manure Expo last year at Brookings. We, anybody who attended that, um, if you've attended it and were at the dairy tour, let people know the amount of odor that you, you smelled there. Because it's unbelievable. For, for nor, normal people to say a, a manure pond doesn't have any odor. But what came along with it that I didn't have the numbers was the, the, the nitrogen testing on that. There was 17, my test showed 17 pounds per thousand gallons of nitrogen in that stuff that had no odor. Now that's impossible unless something else is tying up, like there's a, a poster there, the zeolite or whatever it is, that can can combine that nitrogen uh, in a, in, and hold it in the ammonium form without that ammonia ammonium balance. Uh, with our, it was warm, and the pH was 8%, yet the place didn't stink, yet it had a lot of nitrogen. What's going on? I don't know. Um, I believe an automated manure handling system, we're not doing anything different. I mean, they're still going to soil. It's been doing that for, for decades, centuries. Uh, we're trying to do a little bit various here and there. But, but if we can make it truly automated, where it's a push the button and it happens, that's a way better return than anything else on that farm. Because that farmer doesn't want to do anything with manure, yet he has to. It's very, very costly. Um, the other thing, another one, um, I don't know if somebody has an idea what, what to test for in this effluent uh, so we can monitor the burn ability of effluent. Please tell me. The people that I've talked to, 
Uh, they kind of ended, they say ammonia, but then they say not really. Here's one that's, um, I'm hoping there's students in the, in the audience, the professors that are guiding students. Uh, th that equipment is real. It looks like a toy. Uh, right now, there's a thing called every, every industry, they have an idea how to maximize, uh, the th figure out a theoretical, what's the maximum performance. Wind powers, it's called Bet's Law. Um, and and it, it's very interesting to read, and, and I'm sure it's true. But nobody knows anything about that and how to, what, what is a maximum performance. And it isn't going to be Reese's Law, I can tell you that. This uh, straight C student didn't, isn't going to get there. But there's, there's something to be studied on this. There's other uh, stuff that needs to be looked at uh, for maximization. Um, Yanni's disease? Is that how you say that? Yonis? Okay. It's real, um, yet not necessarily, if, if it's in your herd, you better get rid of it. Uh, and, and it isn't, it comes from your herd, so call those cows out. Struvite, um, just have to be smarter than that. Um, waste to work, to me, meant bigger than manure. And, and a lot of other places in the United States are talking about composting, even on campus. It's a, it's a big thing. Um, uh, uh, waste foods. And what I've learned at other composting facilities is uh, when you're siting them, it's just smart business to have your own farm where you can use that compost yourself in case it wasn't selling practical enough, so that establishes a, a, a base for your your, uh, your your product. And then the other one, um, you will have to contain the runoff, and it's just a smart thing to do to add aeration to that runoff collection, so now you can accept liquid uh, waste as well, uh, uh, like uh, expired milk and things like that. So. <laughs> Uh, that's what I've learned. I got uh, from that composting. I've run into a few people that that know uh, quite a bit. Where do we go from here? Anaerobic digester. We had people been chasing after that. When I was in high school, I had a tour of uh, a digester at a wastewater treatment plant, first one in the nation, and uh, that's out of business. Interesting that on the internet you can find out where new anaerobic digesters are being but you don't ever, ever get to see where on the internet that they retired them, they put them out of business. Um, so there's a lot of AD out there that just isn't operating anymore because of the extensive problems and somebody else covered that. Um, That's my wrap-up screen right down there. Um, if you want to see it, uh, if you saw it, talk to people, ask around if anybody saw, smelled. Um, we will be at uh, this Indiana uh, Manure Expo. We're installed at one of the four ponds. Um, our pond won't smell, but you won't be able to tell that because there'll be three others right next to it. But they will be sending that out to uh, effluent to pivots and or maybe the Steppfully. Um, uh, NRCS, Greg Zwicky saw results. You want to talk with him? He's got an opinion. Uh, it wasn't our equipment, but it's his technology. North Carolina is doing it right. They just need to get rid of their odor. North Carolina does mostly, if I understand this right, uh, apply the manure and nutrients onto the, the grass uh, through pit, throwing it that way. Uh, just need to get rid of the odor. We do have a pretty pretty low installation and operating cost. Uh, the missing link is this scoop link, and uh, hopefully that's going to be there as well. Questions? I may have a question I want to ask now. Yes. Hey, just for the comments on the elder from the next time, um, the other day they took that to provide it here, um, they listed the shutdown process too. So, one of the small projects, uh, 100, 
milk cows or hog facilities. We want to see what this might be able to do there, just to get a handle on it. I, I do pre-insulate uh, the research base. You can keep it as long as you want. Um, that's it. One more question over there. I can put them in. Yes. That sounds crazy because they're going to say all oh, those odors that you release 